First of all, I like to thank the, uh, the organizers, the president, the CEO, Secretary General from the uh, VAS, the World Academy, to invite me to one of the uh, nice uh, places in the world, Brazil, with the wonderful people. I'm always very impressed about Brazilian people. Also during this time, I was very much shocked with the introduction by the president of VAS when he said or he mentioned so many unemployment from young people, people who studied at the university up to 20, 22, 25 years old, and then we have to wait for a long time to have a job. I was really shocked. If I compare that with my situation at the University of Technology, Delft is one of the various places. The students, they leave more normally, or they should leave before at the end of their studies to get a good job. Industry is already there, all professors from academies are there already. And the same thing in the Max Planck Institute. So people get fantastic jobs for the rest of their life with wonderful careers. I would also like to see that. Now I'm here in a session also to tell you how is my feeling in respect to how to get a job, a good job here in Brazil and also for the future. I will give some criteria. Now, I was asking too many questions here, but I've got such a resonance. So many people contacted me and said as a first point, what is now the new revolution? What is that now? Everybody talks about but what is it really? And I will give you a, a few of these examples. And then to say what you have to study in order to, be, to become a good member in the so-called fourth revolution. First of all, in what I am presently myself involved into the so-called new revolution, new revolution that is for sciences, for industry, everybody talks about the industrial revolution. Industrial, that means and also economics, and then also social, etc., etc. But is the industry still the driving force? Well, one of the first is, <laughs> I leave after this session, I leave to Europe. Do you know? 13, 12 hours in the plane, and then still a lot of traveling there. In the new industrial revolution, I take here the helicopter in Rio, it bring me at a certain few hundred meters, thousand meters height. I take the space shuttle and brings me to Europe. And one hour later, I'm really picked up in Brussels by another helicopter and brings me down. That is what we are doing at NASA at present. It's a NASA program in which I'm involved. You know about Tesla. Tesla wanted to have a train 1,000 kilometers an hour. For the time being, the trains are 200 or 300 maybe. He is launching now that train 1,000 kilometers. In last August, in Los Angeles, Tesla was putting uh, for, it was two years ago, that you could be a candidate for a project. And also my students at the University of Technology in Delft, they made a proposal, developed a train, a prototype, got the first prize in August. The first prize is one million dollar. It's not nothing as the first prize of the so-called first train, 1,000 kilometers an hour. So from here to, I don't know, 2,000 kilometers to, um, uh, to, your, uh, to, the, uh, to the capital or uh, to uh, Sao Paulo, well, you will do it in less than two hours by train. You can read and do everything you want. If you look about another example, there are so many people who die and have problems with cancer in Bethesda, 
in the United States, not far away from Washington. There, we are already trying to solve that very simply. An injection, and a week later, it's finished your cancer. That is industrial revolution. And that is often based, it was yesterday, it's well defined by the president of the McKenzie University. He gave that very good. He had also a center at his uh, a nano center. And nano science and nanotechnology is one of the great bases for that future. Now, what is the nano science and nanotechnology? And a few too many people were asking me, what is the industrial? And nano science and technology, I take that as an example. And I will just say what that is. But before doing that, still about the fourth industrial revolution. The first revolution was with agriculture, by the way, 150 years ago. Brought a lot of advantages. The second one was the industrial revolution. That's the car. It's very interesting. Everybody had a car. So the second industrial revolution was very quiet. Also the train there. But the first train between Brussels and Antwerp in Belgium and Europe, when the first train drove and there was a lot of land and cows, the cows were not giving milk during two weeks. So it is an effect, a revolution could have a very strange effect on people, on animals and on the society. The third industrial revolution was the information and communication. And I saw here everybody had something taken in his pocket and everybody works with the television and it's enormous. You cannot get money from your bank or you have to go via the system. Now the fourth industrial revolution is the nanoscience. It's already announced today. We are not speaking of microelectronics in Europe anymore, but from nanoelectronics. Terro electronics, but nano is a very point, a very important kind of element. Now, what is nano? What is that? Some people were me asking me that question. Therefore, I changed drastically my lecture, which I wanted to show. But this one is not working, and that's a pity. So, no, that is not yet. That is the problem. That is not nano. As if it would be nano, it would be efficient. And now here, there's a tennis ball. And 10 times small, 10 times small, and 10 times small, and 10, and then you can see cancer cells, what the, the dimension is, and then you go smaller and smaller and smaller, and then you get to the nanometers, 10 to the minus nine. So nano is something which is very, very small. And it is, everything is based on nano. With nano, you can construct everything. And I will show that a little bit also in this lecture. Now, in respect to the nano, things which are natural, which you find in nature, but the nano man-made are very similar kind of topics. I cannot go in all these details. If you gave nanomaterials in the bio field, at the end you have the bio hydro materials like biosensing. What is biosensing? It will tell you that in, ten, in 20 years that you have cancer or your cancer is coming in 20 years. You can really measure that. But you have also simulating the nature. You could simulate, for example, my students at Max Planck Institute, they make a tree from nano. And the tree is not a synthetic tree. That is a biodegradable tree. So there are so many topics about the nano type of materials. One of the big problem is to work in the nano field, to work in the industrial revolution area who is coming, the nano field is very difficult to make nano materials, very difficult to make those, and they are very costly. And I think, I yesterday understood, there is only one center in Brazil that is the center of that professor or rector of the Mackenzie. And I think you need thousands of laboratories and so on. There are laboratories, but they can only make it in one function, that is steel, nano steel, to make that steel is 10,000 higher. 
and it's already used today. You have probably heard here also in Brazil about that bridge who fell down in Italy two months or three or four months ago. We are now building a nano bridge there, a bridge which is much stronger. The steel is thousand, uh, like the nano carbons, a thousand times stronger than steel. So there is a reality. Nano you will felt in everything. Nano buildings, nano, archi nano architect, everything what you could think. If you look a little bit about, last week I got still an email when I was here about cleaning the windows of the cathedral in Milano. It takes an enormous amount of money and work, etc. 100,000 in order to clean all those, and we do it every five, six years. That will be in future nano glasses, and you don't have to clean it anymore. It's finished. Rain will take the dirty stuff simply away. So, that are some examples which you have. Now, to make the nano is a difficult exercise. A nano with one function, okay. With, with two or three or five or six or seven functions, it's more difficult. If you treat cancer, you inject the nanos, you give a function, take to the nanos, look about the cancer cells, more alpha in your body. Then you give a second function, enter in it, give another function, kill them, and another function go out. That is more or less, we could direct completely everything in life, not only for the cancer, but in many, many fields. That is the orientation, what we have into. Now, to measure the so-called, to measure these small particles is a very difficult kind of an exercise. In order to measure them, a microscope, the microscope which we have at Max Planck are five stores high, and the, the without, we bombard the material in order to analyze your material. So it is very, very difficult and very, very costly in order to do that. But I don't like to go too further. Where can nano be used and is used in energy, in all kinds of energy savings? In all kinds of environment, for example, cleaning water. To clean the water, bacteriologically, I gave an example for ELF, for transport, for information from micro to nano in safety aspects. But there is also a certain problem about the nano in the environment, the nano in elf. If you eat nano, you don't know where the nano particles may stay in your body and may give problems. Therefore, nano foods, we have a lot of development of nano foods. There will be not enough food for the seven um, mil milliards of people, of more people in future, is no food. So we have to find new foods. Nano foods is one of the big solutions. But nano in food is for the time being not accepted. It's not approved by the FAO, it's not approved by the governments, because we don't yet know. The science is not far enough in order to find out what damage also nano in your body could do. So we don't know yet what is green and what is red. So the nano field, like nano chocolates, there is certainly nano already in the chocolate, but on the packages you will never find it. It's a big crisis about this topic. The same thing normally nano food, you will certainly have already foods where you have nano in it, but it is still under great discussion. So we have in this topic the ethics of the so-called nano science is still a very complex. Therefore, we cannot use the nano in medicine. We cannot use the nano in food sciences and not in others because we don't know yet what is green and what is the red. So it is a big kind of uh, uh, problem. Now, nano in medicine, you cannot read everything, but you have nano in medicine, cancer treatment, and so many other kinds of treatments. There are already in study. Nano in dentistry. If you look to the Tokyo University, the work and the fantastic work which is being done, nano in dentistry. Well, I will give you a more detailed picture about that. Nano pharmaceuticals. 
nano in healthcare, nano in cosmetics, so the ladies with the nano cosmetics, that's all the ladies with the fantastic visions, but we are never sure about when the nano goes through and comes in the blood, in the blood a, uh, uh, circuit. That is one of the problems what we have with the nano cosmetics, and there are great studies being done all over Europe and America and Asia and probably also here. If you look about Oreal and all these products, it's very critical. Then you have in nano agriculture. <laughs> there was this, uh, I think the Secretary General of VAS was talking about the DDT. Here is the final solution. You, uh, you use the DDT, but the nano DDT and the nano DDT will not give you problems. What he was showing with the DDT, that is in respect to the agriculture. And then also, like I say, the nano in food sciences. But you have, that was the area of health. Another example that is, that is what we developed at the Max Planck Institute. That is a textile, a jacket for young ladies from 18, 20 years old, that they can go at night and that they are this jacket has everything. That is a jacket which contains all elements which are possible into the jacket. Also, if you are attacked, the aggressor you will get is reaction. So that is really an ideal jacket. It costed too much. It is not yet on the market. But that was what developed was at the Max Planck Institute in Germany. And then you have also here the uh, solution about all possibilities what you could think in the energy sector, in energy, in hydrogen, in solar, where the so-called nano will play a role in the future. If you look here to the engine, the engine of the future, the engine of what Rolls Royce and the future are really work, that is a kind of the engine of the future for the planes, etc. And now the point about, yeah, that is now the fourth generation in a few examples. Now, what studies should and what qualifications should a student, should a graduate have in, for the next fourth generation? And that are the points, what you need. If a student has those points, he gets a job for the rest of his life. He will have on this basis, and I cannot go in all the details, but I will only take one element in detail that is on what we have various discussions, that is the multidisciplinarity and the transdisciplinarity. We'll go in detail. But with that curriculum, and that curriculum has been developed by a large number of universities in the United States, Europe, and Asia together. And that are more or less the conclusions. You will get that in the proceedings, probably from this, uh, uh, from this conference. Now, what is now multi and transdisciplinarity? Let me go still simply to the multidisciplinarity. If you are working as a chemist in inorganic materials in a laboratory, an institute, inorganic materials institute, when you are working in that institute, then you certainly can develop a number of products, and there are Nobel Prize winners who are coming from that one. The same thing if you are working in organic plastics and so on, and polymers, you certainly will discover something. But if you have the knowledge of both, then you will really be able to invent that one. You will be able to invent this one. So these topics, you will not invent if you are a scientist in that specific laboratory. And the same thing for this one. And you could extrapolate with many other laboratories. So if you have both together. Now, if, they have, if these two are together, and if you are then also in contact, not only contact, but also the deep knowledge of the natural materials, then you could also Look about intelligent materials. What is an intelligent material? Intelligent material that is if an aeroplane flies and if there is a crack somewhere that the, um, the materials where the crack is say to the pilot, look, I'm in a great problem here. You should land immediately or, and what he can do is he can repair it. 
that are intelligent materials. Intelligent materials, that is materials who can talk to you, who say what it is a problem. And that are the materials for the future. They can only be detected if you have the knowledge there and there inside the intelligent. And the same thing is that if you have both, then you could do and invent many, many types of materials which is needed. If you have a job and if you have a PhD in one of the, what has been said before, you have a PhD in the area of the inorganic materials. Now, in future, the industrial revolution the requires much, much more than that one. And therefore, it is very important to have the multi, a multi-interdisciplinary education. And give you an example. At the, the BASF, a big chemical company in Germany, they have settlements all over the world. It was a stable company. 50 years ago, a PhD in chemistry got a job for his life. But today, what is happening? B BASF reduces drastically their chemical sector, buys food sciences, buy electronic components, and they have done only PhDs in chemistry, who has no knowledge in the other field. What is BASF doing? The people are 40, 50 years old, and they kick them out. And it's very difficult if you are 40, 50 years old to find another job. If you are then a chemist, to find a job, and during these 10 years, you got a good salary, to go and move elsewhere is a big problem. Now, what is then being done in Europe? Well, retrain, retrain, that is, <laughs> what can you do with retrain? You have a, a, a doctorate degree in chemistry, you have to train you in what, electronics and so on. That is, that's absolutely not useful, and at the end, he will not be an expert in the field, he doesn't well understand it, etc. He will get a lower salary and he will be disappointed for the rest of his life. So it is very important to have a multidisciplinary uh, education, as otherwise you may get a lot of problems. Now, what education? What should you study? Now, our proposal, and that is a study which has been made between the United States and Europe, particularly with the National Science Foundations and American Academies. That is the training what the university should give. Not only a training for a specific degree, but that is a training for a multidisciplinary person for which he can really open the doors for his future. And that you will see a lot of languages is in the first year, that's for a bachelor degree. In the first year, he get all of the languages near physics and I don't know what, but he also gets complementary studies that may be theology or there may be philosophy of that may be human sciences in the field. And his laboratory research is not only the research into the field of uh, uh, not only in the field of a specific, uh, a specific needs in a laboratory, but that is a project which is with industry already from the beginning that the project is with industry. And you will see that is over so called social sciences and everything is increasing so that you're really making somebody who is an excellent scientist who knows the society, who knows that the society, and that he needs the society, that he needs him, he knows about ethics, he knows about economy, he knows about the languages, etc. And that is more or less a kind of a basis of what we want like to see. Now, if you, it is not only a problem for the students, but the university has to play an important role. You have no year sit in universities and the university is not offering it. Let me give you an example, my personal. If you are a medical doctor, it takes six, seven years. And then you study engineering, it takes still five years. In future, we need doctors, engineers together with a training of five, six years. That is already installed in Harvard. University starting with that. We would like to follow that. But it is not only for a medical doctor and engineer, 
that that is also could be for a medical doctor and for an insurance company. Of, so you need absolutely various kinds of... Uh, uh, so the university plays here an important role for the students, but also the research centers. I discussed that yesterday with the director, Mackenzie, but also the industry and then the society. And you need all those. And yesterday we had a session about innovation, how to create an innovation. An innovation is created at the university because the industry cannot do it and is not doing. The discoveries are at university. But if you have a discovery at the university, it's completely disconnected from the rest of the society, from the research laboratory, from the industry, from the government who has to pay in order to promote it, you will not go very far. And that is really what the duties are. We have really duties for the various kinds of bodies. And then a, um, what is very important also in a university, that is to create the education together with the research, innovation, and at the end, so education with research come to the innovation and then in all kinds of fields, so it is environment, health, in order to get the product. And then you will be really successful into that uh, topic. If you go, and I don't like to go to get the rules, what again for the future, I can really tell you that if you don't have that education in the future, you will have no good jobs. And at the end, you will, not, you will not get the job. Because the industry requires people with this kind of education, what I'm saying. Google in Geneva, what I already said before, they couldn't find their people. What is Google doing to set up their own university? The industry has great problems. There are many jobs available, and they don't find the people for the job. There is a big gap. And I think we cannot wait and wait, because the future industry will be a completely different industry. And the industry is so different and will really widen from the university that between the university and the industry, not only the industry, that could be insurance companies and everything. And that is one of the big problems. And today that is already felt. If we go to the Deutsche Bank, the Deutsche Bank, they have no big department in nanoscience and nanotechnology. If you go to assurance company like AXA or others, there you will also get a number of uh, serious problems. And an insurance company cannot insure something what they don't know. I don't uh, can go too much further what I would not like to do. The point is what I wanted to say, that the multidisciplinarity is such an important kind of element. And our universities are not prepared, and our universities are not prepared for it. And uh, this is uh, a great sorry and damage for the students. The students will not be, are not prepared for that one, and we are very concerned in Europe. And the last point that I want to say is, we in Europe, we had a big problem in the past, as 25 years ago. We had 30 different countries in Europe with a different syllabus and different there are engineering schools in the past in Europe with three years and you got engineer and you have other countries seven years. We have tried and find the system. We find it that was developed in 95 and in 2010 all universities of Europe had to follow the same system. This allows that students can start and study in all areas, in all universities, recognized by all universities and recognized by the industry. And that is also a very important point. Nanoscience and the fourth revolution is worldwide and Brasilia is a part of worldwide. And one should also have educational systems in which one had the exchanges and similar kind of programs in various continents. Now, we in Europe are very well advanced with the United States. We have now launching the systems with Japan and also with China, and I think and hope that also with Brazil and with South America something could be done. Otherwise, all South Americans, good people, will not find a job here. 
as your industry will not only your industry the industry is worldwide and there will be many influences worldwide on all the industries so that is that europeans will take the important jobs here and the second category you can go and find a job elsewhere. And I think it's a very important topic, that is that we have to think that the fourth industrial revolution is a world exercise, and one has really to be careful. And I think there are not enough studies done on, by the United Nations in respect to countries like Africa and other areas, as we will go further and further away from each other. And concerning the topic of to be gentle with your neighbor, I think we are not yet so far. The value of what has been said this morning, the value of people, the value of training has gone in many, many countries. And that is a real pity to get it back. It's not very easy. And an industrial revolution will make more distance between the people. And we see that already in many countries that the distance between people, the distance between families, within the families, is becoming longer and longer. I can only say, I wish you all the best here in the country. I had in plan, a planned a long talk, in many more details, a talk in a completely different field, but I had to say that because there were too many people in that room who came to say me, what is that and how could we solve it? and in which way we should think. And I've tried just to give a few of those indications. In any case, I thank you for your attention.